Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books. Today we are here with a little bit of a different video. I, instead of my typical reading vlog, I'm going to do more of a rant style video. I kind of tend to stray away from rants because I'm just a humble chef. I don't have a literary degree. I am not a super intellectual reviewer. I just read what I enjoy and kind of go from there. But I recently read a book that was on the long list for the Booker Prize, and I know the shortlist is coming up very, very soon. And I just kind of wanted to talk about this book in a little bit more depth because I had a lot of feelings about it. And I was doing my monthly wrap up for August, which you can find up here somewhere. And when I was recording the video, I found myself talking for like six or seven minutes about this one specific book. And when I'm doing a big wrap up and there's like 20 something books, I'm only trying to talk for a couple sentences just to give you a brief overview. And I just felt like since I had so much to say, I should make a whole entire video about it. So today we're going to talk about Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. I feel like this is kind of an interesting book, particularly when you consider the Booker long list. I feel like typically I am under the impression that they pick more like literary fiction, more prosy, like beautiful writing. And so the fact that this historical fiction was nominated for me was kind of an interesting divergence from what I see as their typical type of writing. And honestly, I'm a bit baffled why they picked this. Of all the historical fictions, why this one? I went into Booth actually relatively op optimistic. I'm a big historical fiction reader. It's like one of my favorite genres. And I typically read more like in the World War II era, even like into Vietnam War and even current, like a little more current historical fiction. This is probably like my least read era of historical fiction. And so I was kind of excited, I mean, to explore, you know, the Civil War period. There's like a lot that's happening that kind of parallels what's going on in the United States currently. So I thought that this was going to be super relevant and edgy and interesting. And then that must be why it was nominated. Instead, it was really flat, kind of boring, heavy handed in terms of the author's voice and totally uninspiring. I feel like so much potential was missed in this book. So before I just like kind of get all over the place in this review, I actually wrote myself some bullet points to try to stay organized as I talk about this. When I feel strongly about books, I tend to ramble and then the rambles turn into like incoherency and you're not here for incoherent ramblings, you're here for a thoughtful review. So let me get my bullet points and let's go through them one by one. I would like to start by saying that I am aware of Karen Joy Fowler's intent with this book because in her book, she includes a nice detail on her whole process for writing this book. It took seven years. She did copious amounts of research into the Booth family, who each of the individuals were, their life, their history and everything. And her intent with this book was to center on the Booth family without centering John Wilkes Booth, the famous, the most famous Booth. So briefly, if you're unfamiliar with John Wilkes Booth, because I know that some of you are not in the US and I don't want to assume that everybody is just completely aware of our history. John Wilkes Booth assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. He is the president that wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves and was a major factor in the Civil War. Wilkes Booth was a Southern apologist. He was in support of the Confederacy and he ended up assassinating Lincoln. He was injured in the assassination escape and eventually was killed later. So that's the rundown of this. He's a very, very famous historical figure here in the United States. We learn about Wilkes Booth and the Lincoln assassination and all of the things central to that specific topic in school. It's part of our required learning. And I feel like perhaps this is like kind of a egotistical thought, but I do feel like even in the world outside of the US, it's a relatively like known thing, maybe not in great detail, but I don't think that like talking about Abraham Lincoln that a lot of people would not at least have a vague idea of who he is. So we have a book centered around a character that a lot of people are going to be at least vaguely familiar with. We have a conclusion to the story before we've even started the story. So that's tricky to deal with to begin with because people are already going to have preconceptions in this book going into it. So I understand her intent to center around his family instead of specifically him because the characters that are his family are kind of in some ways a blank slate. 
I understand that she's going for historical accuracy, so they're not completely a blank slate. But as a reader, I don't know his mother or his father or his sisters, so it gives her the ability to kind of make me view them fairly, unfavorably, sympathize with them, whatever. I also know from her notes at the end of the book that she started writing this book, she was inspired to write this book by the waves of mass shootings in the US. And the goal of this was to kind of make us sympathize with the bad guy's family. She felt that, you know, all of these school shooters, that their families are essentially victims as well. I don't necessarily disagree with the overall concept there. I do agree that families that have murderers and psychopaths and things like that, like sometimes these families aren't really doing anything wrong and they are hurt and damaged by these scenarios too. So I appreciate the idea of, of trying to make the family appear sympathetic, but I don't know that she was entirely successful with this. So let's kind of dive into some of my bullet points and we'll go down this, you know, this list that I have and discuss one by one. The first issue that I have with this book is that I'm not sure who we're supposed to be paying attention to really. I think that the main three characters of the story are the middle children and the family. We get a lot of Edwin, Rosalie, and Asia, but it also pops around to June, it pops around to their father, their mother, John. It's so all over the place. It kept me from really investing in any of the characters at all. I wanted to feel something, whether it was disgust, repulsion, um, like I liked somebody. I, I just wanted to feel something for someone and I ended up, because it was so all over the place with everyone, feeling nothing for anyone. I felt no emotional connection to any of the characters at all. I didn't empathize with the mom who was going through all of these struggles or so we're told. The father was kind of off in his own world. The siblings, like I just, I, I felt nothing for them. And with such a large cast of characters, it's a pretty remarkable feat to make them so bland that you don't feel anything. I wish that she would have just focused in on one main character and then allowed us to get to know the rest of the family through that lens of that one character. So say had she picked Asia or Rosalie as a main character, we would have allowed us to really understand how that person is thinking, how their life is developing, how they view their, their sibling, their famous, soon to be famous sibling, and you know maybe perhaps develop some sympathy for them. But instead, you know, it just rips us from one person to the next and like over a huge span of years too. That's the other thing is this book covers so many years. It's like a whole entire lifetime of this family. And so because of the immense span of time plus the immense amount of characters, you just don't build any relationships with anyone in the book. Fowler also kind of avoids talking about John at all. Like he's a mere footnote, which is very strange because she goes into so much detail about everyone else in the family and then purposefully leaves out many details surrounding John. I think that was a mistake. John Wilkes Booth is definitely the most famous Booth. Everybody knows that he's coming somewhere in the story. And so like trying to hide him and keep him like a surprise kind of to me made the whole novel just feel off. It, it it was distracting in a way. Like, you're kind of like, wait a minute. So you're spending page upon page upon page about Edwin and his theater and his drinking and his romantic relationships. But John gets like two lines, even though like I had never heard of Edwin Booth before this particular book. I think if she had let us see John, but through a sibling's eyes, like if she had centered on one sibling and then we were allowed to see John developing like all the other siblings, I think that would have been a more effective approach to the characters. I also found that the foreshadowing was super heavy in this book. I almost feel like Fowler thinks that her readers are unintelligent or incapable of understanding what's happening down the road. Maybe she thinks that most people are not gonna have historical literacy and she needs to spoon feed us the message that John Wilkes Booth is going to assassinate Lincoln. But as I said, I think most people going into this book at least have a vague idea of this scenario here. So I don't think that you need to force feed it to the reader. There's a lot of breaking of the third wall where Fowler herself actually steps into the story and gives you hints. She does this really dark, ominous foreshadowing and it rips you back out of the narrative. So you're in the perspective of a character. So say you're in the perspective of the sister Asia. 
and you're hearing about her life and her story and her perspective on things. And then all of a sudden there's the, this omniscient voice in the background that directly tells you how to feel about something. And it's distracting. It really, again, rips you out of the narrative. Just when you start to feel like you're maybe starting to immerse with a character, all of a sudden you're pulled out and you're like, who is this voice? And it's very much Fowler and it's very much her opinion or her perspective. I just don't think that it made very much narrative sense. It wasn't even like a chapter basis. It's like just random lines interjected between characters' perspectives. So there's no real rhyme or reason to how it's done either. And it just, it messes up the flow and it messes up the narration. There was also this obsession with theater. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that theater is a major part of the Booth family. Father Booth is a very famous actor, probably one of the most famous of his times. He's well known and well respected. And then Edwin, June, and John all end up going into the theater as well. And even the girls in the family who are not allowed to go into theater have a love for the theater. So I do understand that theater is a big thing with this family. However, I think that, again, Fowler really uses the theater in a heavy foreshadowing way. Like there's all of this Shakespearean lines that are interjected as conversation between the siblings. So like something occurs and then they start speaking in lines from different Shakespearean plays. And honestly, for me, it just felt really pretentious. Maybe it was authentic to the times. I just didn't love that. I thought that was unnecessary. And it was, again, spoon feeding the fact that these people are theater people. As if we haven't got it by the fact that they all are professional actors, that they're all super dramatic, that they all travel around the country and work in, in plays and theater, that they all respect the theater. Like, it's so drilled into our head that you don't need the references to Shakespeare and all of this other heavy handed stuff. I think that some subtlety would have would have been nice. Another thing that this book really suffers from, and this kind of is just piggybacking off of what I've already said here, is that there's a lot of telling and not a lot of showing. So throughout the book, Fowler explores the family's views on Lincoln's decisions. She explores their views on slavery and politics of the day. And I'll just say that their family is very centrist, middle of the line. They kind of think slavery is bad, but not enough to really care about black people in any deep or moral way. They still have people that are essentially slaves. They do kind of sort of free them after a period of time, but they don't free their children and they don't help them to get their children freed and they still sell the children off and things like that. So they're still pretty shitty, maybe slightly less shitty because they're okay with slaves eventually being freed, but ultimately still pretty shitty. And it's discussed a lot. There's a lot of, you know, different family members saying directly like slavery is wrong, but there's never any, real visual to indicate why slavery is wrong. The most representation that we get is that there is one woman in the book whose children are sold off to another farm and she spends her life basically trying to purchase her children out of slavery. And it's a very minor portion of the story. And I think that that was the most emotive part of the story. I felt more compassion and sympathy for this particular woman and her struggle to free herself, her husband, and her children from slavery than I did for any of the Booth family. And I wish that that had been a larger portion of the story. I wish that we would have delved more into Black characters and why slavery was wrong and why the Booth family came to view things the way that they did. There's really no explanation, just a lot of telling you they feel this way without why they feel this way. Which, considering that we see like a 30 year span, of life. How did we not have time in 500 pages to ever show any experiences that indicate slavery is bad? And it's not just in relation to slavery, it's in relation to John's radicalization. There's a lot of things that we're told about, but we never actually see conclusive proof. And again, this comes down to, I feel like Fowler didn't think the readers were going to get it. So she went and spoon fed, spoon fed, and spoon fed. And then my biggest issue with this book comes with current day politics. I feel like this was a huge missed opportunity. I feel like in this time, it's impossible to be unaware of like Donald Trump and his atrocious presidency and all of the craziness that's going on in the US. We had a mob of people storm our capital to try to overthrow an election. We have you know, KKK and white supremacists marching in the streets. 
there is a lot of American radicalism that is going on, American extremism that's going on. And Wilkes Booth is a radicalized Southern apologist, right? So he doesn't necessarily start out as somebody that wants to go assassinate the president. At some point, he's a little boy. And at some point, he's playing with his siblings and he's an actor. And because this book does not center him and refuses to actually show anything substantial about him, we have no idea how he's radicalized. And his siblings don't really discuss in any great detail how he's radicalized either. In fact, it almost seems like a surprise to them when he goes out and assassinates the president. And I know that people don't typically want to view their family members as evil. Like you see it all the time when someone catches a serial killer or a murderer or a rapist or whatever, people are like, oh my gosh, but he was so sweet. I had no idea. And that's because we want to see the best in the people that we love. I do understand that. So I do understand the family not necessarily thinking like, oh, he's a psychopath and he's going to go out and kill the president. However, typically there are warning signs. And I feel like in a family, like as kind of tight knit as they're portrayed, there would be some warning signs ahead of time. Like you would see the subtle radicalization. We do see a little bit of him starting to talk about politics and getting a little bit aggressive and confrontational with his brother at some point. But it's not anything worse than like what happens at most people's family dinners, you know, like you get the conservative grandparents and the liberal uncle and they're fighting over dinner. That's kind of how it is played off in this book. And so she never talks about the radicalization process. She never talks about how Wilkes Booth gets to the point that he wants to murder the president. And I think that that's a huge missed opportunity. I think that that parallel with the radicalization of white supremacists and extremists in the United States now would have been so timely, so thought provoking. I thought that that was where she was going to go with this book. I really hoped that's where she was going to go with this book. And instead, it just fizzled out. The actual assassination of Lincoln happens at the very end of the book, and it's like almost a footnote. And then even the reactions of the family members, we've spent 500 pages learning about the family members and who they are and trying to build a relationship with them. And then this monumental thing happens that this book has been building to and we don't actually see any of their response to it. It's like a few pages, super rushed, and then it's over. I, again, was super disappointed. I think that Fowler could have dug so much deeper with current themes, with current politics, with parallels between the two generations. I think there was a lot of opportunities for a very timely book and it missed a lot of them. And then it failed to make me feel anything towards the Booth family because that point when John commits this horrible atrocious act and is eventually killed while fleeing, we don't really get to see the reaction of it. I feel that she would have been better served in this book had she started within a shorter time frame. like, okay, we're going to study five years of this family leading up to like, we're going to explore the radicalization of Booth leading up to the moment that he assassinates Lincoln. And then we're going to spend a decent time post assassination showing the family and what they deal with. So she talks about this being inspired by the families of school shooters, right? And what they go through in the media and kind of this desire to build some sympathy for families who, who have like a psychopathic or horrific family member. But she doesn't do that in the book either. We don't see their reactions. We don't see like them getting criticized by the media. We don't see the exploration of them and how they messed up and created this monster. We don't see them being bullied. We don't see them being shut out of the theater. We don't see anything, anything at all that remotely reflects this message. And so I'm really ultimately just very confused about what this book was supposed to do. I think that the idea overall is a cool idea, but I think that maybe Fowler got so lost in her research and the desire to put all this micro information into this book and just like pack it full of every little tiny bit of information that she could, that she lost the whole scope and frame of, of the book. And it's a shame because it's A, a really interesting piece of American history. B, it's very reflective of what's currently going on in the United States. And C, it could have been a fantastic novel. I have seen people criticize the book because it has this anticlimactic finish because we know what happens with Booth. I think that even knowing what happens with Booth and Lincoln, it could have still been a great novel if we had had characters that we cared about and if we had been able to see a bit more of their reaction to this event. But by avoiding this event until the last 20 or 30 pages, I think it ultimately made a novel that was boring, fell flat, and was super heavy handed. I really don't understand 
why this was nominated on the Booker long list. Maybe because Civil War historical fiction is rare. Maybe because of the messaging that Fowler has tried to incorporate in it. Again, intent is great, execution, very poor. So I hope that you enjoyed this review. Again, if you like this book, totally okay. I know that you know some things are for some people and some things are not for some people. This book was certainly not for me. It was a slog. It took a lot of effort to get through it. I kept reading it thinking it was gonna pick up at some point and it just never did. So in conclusion, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below and let me know if you've read this, how you felt, and if you haven't read it, do you plan to? I don't know if I would personally maybe pick it up on audiobook and listen to it on like triple speed. Other than that, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. I'm Caitlin Bandy. This is my channel, Bandy's Books. Bye.